Okay, I'm going to use these insurance claims data um, to create a time series plot. And a time series plot is essentially an XY plot where the data, in this case the number of days it takes to process an insurance claim, will be found on the Y axis. And the X axis can be, well, it can be a, a variety of things, as we'll see. So right now in column C4, I simply have the number of days it takes to process a claim. And I don't have any, I don't have any accompanying data. For example, this number of 48. It represents 48 days to process a claim, but is this claim number one, claim number two, claim number three, etc. I don't really know. So anyway, let's just deal with the data as they are, and then we'll see what else we could do with them. So a time series plot is a graph. Let's go to the Graph tab, choose Time Series Plot. I'm going to want a simple time series, and I'm using the insurance claims data. And if I just say OK and let Minitab do its the default setting, say OK, here's the plot I get. And yeah, number of days to process the claim is on the y-axis. And on the x-axis, because I haven't specified anything, Minitab by default calls this index. And what it represents really is the order in which the data appear in my spreadsheet. So here, or am I if I mouse over? Come on. 48 days is my first data point in row number one. The next data point is 41 days. It's in row number two. This guy down here is in row number three. It's 35 days, etc. So these data are being plotted in the order that I see here. Okay, and assuming that this order represents something that's significant, what this plot really is telling me is that there is a bit of a trend in the time it takes to process your insurance claim. And if we start from data point one over to, I don't know, maybe this one right here, which is data point number 22, over the first 22, I don't know, 22 claims, or I don't know what this represents, then the amount of time it takes to process your claim is roughly Stable, roughly the same. Yeah, it goes up and down a bit, but overall there's kind of an average going on here. Now, beyond the 22nd data point, in this case from 23 onwards, and ignoring that guy right up there, there's kind of been a shift, and it looks like the time it takes to process our claim has gotten lower. So time series plot just gives us an idea of whether there's a trend. Now, I'm going to show you something else you can do with this time series plot. I'm going to shrink this down. And if I haven't shown you already, this little white box up here is your friend. It takes you to the last dialog box you had opened. So I click on that. I had insurance claims. Now, if I hit this button here that says time scale, uh, note that the default was Minitab would use an index. In other words, it's plot plotting the data in the order in which they appear. I could say that these data actually represent uh, some sort of a calendar date, as an example. And when I hit calendar, I can go, um, uh, the calendar can be in terms of days, months, quarters, years, and then there's these other combinations. So I don't know, let's just say we wanted to say that these data represent a month and a subsequent year. And if I don't do anything else, just watch what happens. Say OK, OK again. OK, now the plot is exactly the same, except what appears on the y-axis. So because we're in November 2020 when I'm producing this video, that's the date that shows up here. So there's November 2020, and then I have presumably December 2020. And then I'm getting into January 2021, etc. And my last data point is over here in February of 2024. Well, all right, you know, this has gone into the future here now, so these numbers don't really mean too much. But let's just say that these data did represent uh, a particular time period. 
I could say, well, all right, maybe these data represent from January. And by the way, I've tried this. Don't try to eliminate January. It wants a number from 1 to 12. So say these data represent um, data that were collected from January of, I don't know, 2017 uh, up to the present. And you get to choose what your data increment is. I'm just going to say it's going to go by month. Now, I suppose if I did two or three or four or five or six well then it will go by every two months every four months every six months or whatever but i'm just going to say they represent every month say okay and now my data again my plot looks exactly the same but my first data point now represents january of 2017 and my last data point represents April of 2020. So that makes a little bit more sense. So bottom line is what you put on this wall on the x-axis is kind of dependent on what these data represent. Because I had no idea what they represented, probably index would have been better. And then you're just plotting them in the order in which they appear. All right, I'm going to, in the next video, show you how you can create the same plot using a scatter plot.